Hello and welcome to the Quotas Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll explore how to deploy a React application to AWS CloudFront. Let me give you an overview of what we'll do in this video. First, we'll start off with an introduction to CloudFront. Then we'll move on to creating an S3 bucket, which is something that will require for CloudFront. We're gonna store our website files over there, our website files, which will be the build folder of our React application. So then we're gonna create a CloudFront distribution and then connect our S3 bucket and the CloudFront distribution. Okay, that's what we'll be doing in this video. Let's get started with the explanation for CloudFront. So to understand CloudFront, let's take a look at this diagram. This diagram is the traditional or classic approach, I guess you could say, of serving users. So you have an origin server and users across the globe can access that server. But here is an issue. For example, we can see that the distance for users the distance between the user and the server varies based on the locality of the user. Someone living in Europe, for example, will be very close to the server, getting high speeds and low latency. But someone on the other side of the world, like the US or the far side of Asia, so they'll have a much harder time accessing the server because it's much further away. And this can be a big issue in performance critical applications, right? So how do we solve this issue? Well, that's what the CDN concept is about, Content Delivery Network, CDN, okay? So that's what CloudFront is. It's basically a CDN service. This is what CloudFront is, basically. This is an image that illustrates the CDN architecture. It's from Cloudflare, another popular CDN provider. So basically what you have is an origin server, this yellow one, orange one, that's an origin server, okay? The main original server. So what a CDN architecture does is that it distributes, it basically copies the website, the website files to local servers. So you see these boxes over here, these rectangular boxes. These are what we call CDN servers that are distributed across the world. And all of these will store a copy of the website. What that basically means is that, for example, this origin server is in the US, but it has a CDN server in Asia. So when someone from Asia accesses the website, so instead of having to access the origin server, which is all the way on the other side of the world, he can just access the CDN server. Basically, he'll be routed to the CDN server, which is very close to him. So that's the concept of the CDN architecture, which basically copies, uh, copies the website and distributes it across the entire globe, typically across dozens of different servers, and then the servers are automatically, the users are automatically distributed uh, to the nearest server. That's how it works. Now that we understand the basic concept behind CloudFront, let's move over towards creating our S3 bucket. To use S3, go to your AWS dashboard, then type S3 in the search bar, and then just click on the first option, S3. And here is where we are going to create a bucket. The bucket is where we will store our website files. It's basically a container. Okay, we'll click on create bucket and then we'll leave it as a general general purpose bucket. We'll call it Coders Legacy Cloud Front Tutorial. All right, make sure this name is unique because it's like a URL. Okay, so do that. Then we can leave the settings on the default settings. Most of these will be controlled through CloudFront. Okay, so we don't need to modify these. We'll modify these a bit later, all right? If you have a, an existing bucket, you, you can still follow along. Don't worry. So I'll just create the bucket. Okay. No uppercase characters. Now, now that we have the bucket created, we're going to go over to our code, our React application. And if you haven't already built it, make sure you do so. So we'll do npm run build. And this can vary based on your React application, but the gist of it is you just need to build your application, okay? And it can change depending on what service you're using. Like I'm using NPM, you might have Yarn. So you're going to do Yarn run build. So just do that and this will generate a dist folder or it might be called a build folder. Again, that depends on uh, how you build and structure your React application. So just get this folder, all right? And what we're going to do is go to our bucket, okay? and upload, click on upload over here. Then go over to our disk folder and just copy everything over here, okay? And make sure you do it in this specific manner, 
all right there's a reason why i'm not copying the dist folder itself the whole dist folder the reason i'm copying the contents of it is because the index.html file should be in the root okay in the root directory when you upload it over here otherwise it's going to be it's going to cause some problems so just upload it okay and no need to modify any settings when uploading it just leave them at the default settings we'll make some adjustments later when setting up cloudfront regarding bucket policies so just um, close this now and again just verify that index.html is located in the root directory over here, over here and not within some subfolder now once we've done this we can um, just proceed I think we don't need to modify anything in here but if you guys have an existing bucket just make sure you modify things so that they're the same so that they match what I have here currently okay so now we're going to click on this search bar and search up CloudFront, okay? And so we're basically gonna link it to this bucket by first we need to create a distribution. Okay, so now we do create distribution. Then here we have to pick an origin domain. All right, you just load it. So this is the S3 bucket, okay? Click on that. All right, so here's where we can make some changes. Public, you can keep it public, okay, but it's not as safe, what I would recommend, and it's not really much of a hassle. What you should do is origin access control. What this does is that it only allows CloudFront to access the S3 bucket. Basically, it doesn't allow anyone else to access it, okay? So if you like search this URL and you try accessing it, the S3 bucket, um, then it's not gonna work. Your website, your website files will only be able to be served through CloudFront, okay, which is ideally what you want. So what we're gonna do is create a new ax origin access control over here. Just leave everything at the default settings, okay, and click create. Okay, and this creates it. And this says that we must update the S3 bucket policy, which is this thing over here in our S3 bucket, go to permissions, and this is the bucket policy. Currently it's empty and it's saying that it'll provide us with the policy statement after we create the distribution, which will then paste over here, okay? So let's continue, continue. Okay, do this, redirect HTTP to HTTPS, that's better. Okay, now this is also important. If your React application is something that only has get, like only read only stuff, like you're just doing a simple blog, for example, um, then you can do this, the default option, but if, for example, you have a website which involves the user also doing something like a comment, posting a comment. So that's where you might want to do this, which gives you the put and post. It makes these HTTP methods allowed. But I have a very basic website, so I'm just going to go with the default option. So let's continue. And I don't think there's any changes here. No, no, this is the default, default, okay. And we'll do do not enable security protections here. You can enable it, but it is not a free feature. So I'll just I'll just keep it disabled. And it's not like I need the security for a tutorial video. All right, this is the best. Okay, because this makes the CDN servers across the entire world. All right, this one would only do it across North America and Europe, which you can do if your target audience is not outside America and Europe. Okay. So let's continue. If you have a custom domain name, instead of the default created ones, which can look a bit ugly, you can use that. Let's proceed, proceed, create distribution. All right. Okay, so it says here S3 bucket policy needs to be updated. Click on copy policy. And then here we can click edit and just paste this in and then click save changes. All right, cool. So come back to CloudFront and let's just get rid of that get rid of that okay now this is the custom this is the domain name that they've assigned us and it does look a bit ugly so if you want to get your own domain name you can use the route 53 amazon service and buy your own domain name okay so just copy this and then try accessing it and while that loads okay hold on right now it's currently deploying i'll just skip ahead a little bit until it's finished all right, so the deployment is completed. We can tell by the date over here. If there's a date here, that means it's completed, all right? So what we'll do now is copy this, 
the domain distribution name and hit enter. Okay, so this has returned to us access denied. There's no style information associated with it. Okay, um, what we're going to do is double check everything in the settings. All right, is it possible that the changes have been propagated yet? Because it does take some time. All right. Okay, hold on. We actually had to enter the dot index.html because right now it doesn't know what to serve, what to serve to the user, right? So we need to actually mention that when the user arrives at the root URL, show him index.html. Okay, so let's save this. And again, it's going to take some time to redeploy. Okay, this will take a few minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video and resume when it's done. All right, so it's now deployed again. So let's go here, refresh. Okay, there we go. Here's our website being served from the CDN. That's pretty great. One thing I would like to say before I end this video is that whenever I make a tutorial video, I always look at other problems that people faced when doing this exact same process. So then I try to cover uh, solutions to those problems in my video as well. So one thing I saw that people would face that access denied error and sometimes it would actually take an hour or so for the changes to propagate. There's a concept called DNS propagation and it can take some time basically for the entire CDN architecture to become online. Uh, you can look at DNS propagation later in detail, but DNS propagation does take some time. It is, it is known to sometimes take several hours. So if you guys have done everything, if you've configured everything the way it's supposed to be and you're confident in it, then just wait a few hours, try it again after a few hours, okay? And hopefully it'll be working. And with this, we'll end the video. Hope you guys found it interesting and informative. All right, later.